My friends, do you have people who you can call on? Do you have people who are trying to call on you, but you are trying to walk by yourself? Because if you want to run in this calling, God is saying today, you're going to need some people who've got your back. You're going to need some community to run with you. You see, I'm a missionary evangelist and I literally just came back from Tanzania last year. We saw 725,000 people come to the Lord Jesus Christ. But I'm telling you something, my friends. I didn't accomplish this by myself. Hello and welcome to TBN Presents. My name is Nia Cerise Conte and I'm coming to you today to speak to you on a special topic. It is called Secrets of an Inner Circle. Now, you may be wondering, what is this about? What's going on? This is all part of the God Use Me series. Perhaps you're sitting right now in your home and you've been praying, you've been crying out to God and saying, God, I want you to use me. God, I know there's a calling over my life. God, there's something that has to shift this year in 2022. So help me to understand what you want to use me for. This series is specifically for people who know that there's a burning passion on the inside of them for them to be used by God, but they underestimate themselves. Perhaps you're watching this and you haven't realized that actually God loves to use his children in very peculiar and sometimes unusual and underrated ways. So I'm going to be breaking some myths today. I'm going to be speaking to you about what it means to actually have a support system and community and how necessary that is for the call. You see, my friends, the devil doesn't like you understanding that you have a kingdom calling over your life. Because when you have a kingdom calling, what you realize is that you can move with God and see the kingdom of the Lord advance. He hates it. He hates you knowing your giftings. He hates you realizing who you truly are in Christ Jesus. And today I've come to speak to you about your authority in not only the name of Christ Jesus, but having people around you to push you and propel you into everything that you're called to do. So my first question to you my friends is what is the first thing that comes to mind when you think of destiny what is it that you maybe ponder on when someone starts speaking about calling do you think of me or do you think of we and this is where I come in because I want to speak to you today about how community could actually be probably one of your greatest weapons of warfare in this kingdom calling. So maybe you're thinking Nia Cerise I hear you I see what you're trying to say but I don't even really know what a calling is. I want to explain to you what that definition really truly can mean. Define a calling, a strong inner impulse toward a particular course of action, especially when accompanied by conviction of divine influence. What is divine influence? The answer is, it is a person, the person of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has a calling for you, but there is a war going on. And you see the enemy, the opposer of men, does not want you to discover that divine influence. You see, when we talk about destiny and we talk about these types of things, I don't know if you realize this, but you absolutely petrify the devil with your life. And so my aim right here is to illuminate why that is and get you to start walking in that a little bit more. So stay with me. I initially asked you, what is it like when you think of destiny? Me? We? Is it myself? Alone? And this is the mentality of so many people. We have so many people in today's society who are living out this lone wolf calling. Maybe you're watching right now and you've been going through some church hurt. Maybe some relationships have become a little bit tricky and you feel as though there are frictions everywhere and you don't know how to relate to people anymore. You feel like I'm going to do this by myself. I'm just going to, you know, go off and I'm going to run in this calling without those people who hurt me. But my friends, let me tell you something. Hebrews 10, 25 says, and let us not neglect our meeting together. Who is that? The church. 
as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. The day of Jesus's return is coming very, very soon. And God is speaking to us through that scripture. He's saying, do not, do not neglect the church meeting together. And I wanna encourage you, how is your community right now? How is your relationship with those around you? What does your support system look like? Because my friend, I'm telling you, when you have a strong support system, you may realize very soon that that is what's going to help you continue to run and do longevity rather than a short plan. My friends, this is not just about church gathering. This scripture that I'm unpacking to you today is not just about the body of Christ meeting every Sunday and us having a chin wag. I'm talking about this scripture today because it's actually a mandate that is being given to us in preparation for the second coming of Christ Jesus. And God is giving us tools in order for us to be strengthened to understand how we can prepare for that coming day. You see, many people think of the calling as me, myself and I, but that is not God's intention. That was never what God wanted. In fact, the book of the Bible actually teaches us how family can engage with one another. And we see that from the beginning right until the end. God using community to worship him, to walk towards him, to reach him. And so I want to explain to you that community is part of the call. Community, I repeat, is part of the calling. Throughout scripture, we see that this is one of the most effective ways that God can engage with his people. And I want to unpack a story that impacted me so deeply when I was reading it. It's actually Daniel. Daniel in the Bible, well known for the spirit of excellence, well known as many of you listening may know was very, very, very strong in interpreting dreams and moving in the calling of God and shaking a nation. But if you wanna be a nation shaker, I've got something to tell you today that we can learn from Daniel's story. Daniel had community. He was not a lone wolf. He came to Babylon to serve under Nebuchadnezzar with his friends. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego were key players in this story. And I honestly believe they're some of the most underestimated people throughout the whole text because these men were on fire. And when they arrived and they were serving, they lived life differently. And I remember reading Daniel 1. And in scripture, I read in verse eight, how Daniel arrived and was determined not to defile himself by eating the food and wine given to them by the king. If you read later down in verse 15, the Bible tells us that at the end of the 10 days where they decided not to defile themselves with these foods and wines, that him and his friends looked healthier and better and more nourished than any of the other young men who had been eating the food assigned by the king. You know, for many people, they give Daniel a round of applause and they say, that's really great. But I don't think you understand the context of what was really going on. This was a huge step for them to actually say, we will not eat your foods. We will not comply with your decisions and your desires for our lives. We will stand and we will walk in alignment with our God. And I think well, the mentioning of this is so necessary because these group of pe this group of people are essentially key players in influencing one another's lives. Because I don't believe that Daniel had a group of lukewarm friends. No, no, this is Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, my friends. We're talking about people who said they would not bow to an idol and that they would rather burn in a fiery furnace than actually go down, okay? So I'm trying to explain to you today that these three men who were friends with Daniel were stoking hot, fiery firebrands for the kingdom of God. You know, in my life, I pray that God would position me with people who are so hot for God that when I'm actually spending time with them, when I'm, when I'm chilling with these people, I pray that I would feel lukewarm. Have you ever th th thought about that? For you to actually be around people who are so, so deep in the things of God that you genuinely feel as though you are cold when you are seated in their presence. 
I want people who stoke the flame. I want people who push me. And the reason why I love this text so much is because these men stood together. I'm sure they were encouraging each other and when they were hungry or when they were tempted or when they wanted to maybe go and drink a little bit of wine, one of those men stood up and said, no, we know that we've come here on assignment. We know what we're here to do. We know why we have come to this place and we will stand together. Iron sharpens iron, my friend. And I believe that God is calling us into a time where we realize that friendship, friendship and community are some of the greatest things that we can embrace as part of our calling. You know, it was only when I, you know, started running for Christ and, you know, going deeper in the things of God that I began to value a support system. And I want to read something else to you because there came a time when Daniel was actually requested to come and give an interpretation of the king's puzzling dream. Now, the reason why I want to highlight this verse to you in Daniel 2 is because when King Nebuchadnezzar demanded for Daniel to come because his witch doctors and his magicians could not interpret a dream that God was trying to speak and tell Nebuchadnezzar about many people think fantastic Daniel interpreted these dreams and it was amazing he went to bed and you know he woke up and he just had the revelation from God and he brought it to the king no 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 my friends if you read in Daniel 2 18 the bible says Daniel asked his friends to pray to God Daniel went to his friends. Daniel spoke to his friends and he said, my friends, let us come together and pray. My friends, let us come together and intercede. I don't understand what this secret is, but I know that if we stand together in prayer, my God, who is the Alpha and Omega, will reveal the dream. You see, the Bible says in Daniel 2.18, Daniel asked his friends to pray to God to the God of heaven, that God would be kind to them and help them understand this secret. And you know, when Daniel went to bed, the Lord revealed the dream. He woke up and he went to the king. He stood before the king and he proclaimed what the Lord had shown to him. Little did the king know about the support system, about the inner circle that was surrounding Daniel, about the people who had been interceding and holding him up in that place. My friends, do you have people who you can call on? Do you have people who are trying to call on you, but you are trying to walk by yourself? Because if you want to run in this calling, God is saying today, you're going to need some people who got your back. You're going to need some community to run with you. You see, I'm a missionary evangelist and I literally just came back from Tanzania last year. We saw 725,000 people come to the Lord Jesus Christ. But I'm telling you something, my friends. I did not accomplish this by myself. I did not do this by myself. If it was not for the community that I had beside me, linking arms and running with me in the harvest field, if not for the intercessors who were on the ground praying and covering me, I would have never seen the harvest that I saw because I've seen that community is so powerful. And let me tell you something, the devil even works in teams. You see, he's understood kingdom principle. He's understood that even demons work together because in the word of God, you see it. You you see it so clearly when the Bible tells us in Matthew 12, 45, it explains that when the devil wants to come and he wants to defile a human being, what does it say? It says he goes out, he goes and seeks, he sources out seven more wicked demons than himself and he brings them together. And then he says, come, let's go and defile that person's life. Let's come and try and attack that individual who I can see has a blind spot. Let's come. He goes, let's round them all up. Depression, anxiety, intimidation fear let's band together and let's break that Christian down so why is it that Christians can't seem to work together why is it that Christians haven't understood this this kingdom principle why is it that Christians are still the ones saying they're going to keep themselves in isolation when the bible has clearly said do not forsake the fellowship of the saints 
We can't afford it in the last time, my friends, because if the devil is banding together for wickedness, Christians need to band together to break the gates of hell down. And I'm telling you, the violent, God is looking for the violent ones, the ones who will say, come on, let's work together. I don't, I'm not looking at our differences. I'm not looking at this. I'm looking at kingdom. And now I want us to hold hands in this. I want us to move in this. And I want us to advance the kingdom of God. Listen, I'm looking for some serious people today. I'm looking for some people who will say, Jesus, whatever you need, you, whatever, send me. These were the words of Isaiah. He made himself available. And being available is not saying to yourself that you're just going to run by yourself, all alone. It's about running with community and support. You know, I want to talk to you about a few other things. Ecclesiastes 4 Verses 9 says, two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. Verse 10, if one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Let me just repeat that again. Someone who falls alone is in real trouble. So God is encouraging us to partner. God is encouraging us to be a community. God is empowering the body of Christ to work together because he understands that one person trying to run in this calling alone is going to be in what? Real trouble. My friends, when we look through the scriptures and we look through how God used individuals, I see Peter locked up in a prison, no way out. And I see the body of Christ earnestly praying. I see them crying out in Acts 12, 5, and they're earnestly interceding before the throne of God, crying out for their brother who is currently imprisoned. And I see God breaking down iron gates and rescuing Peter. This is the type of community that we need. People who are going to intercede, people who are going to pray like mad because they say, listen, 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 I've got my brother's back. I am my brother's keeper. I'm not going to let him fall. You see, in Genesis, there's Cain and Abel. A pitiful and very sad story this is. You see two brothers at war with each other due to what? Jealousy. The Lord comes to Cain and asks him where his brother is. And his reply to it after he's murdered his only brother is, am I my brother's keeper? Am I my brother's keeper? Many of us can look at situations like this and we can say to ourselves, how selfish does he sound? But we've forgotten we often sound like this every single day. Because when people need Christians in their most vulnerable times, Often we can say, that's none of my business. I've got so much on my plate. And in a digital generation where we are oftentimes in the West, we're so concerned with our own lives. We're so concerned with me, myself, and I. But God is saying, where is the we? Where is the we generation? Where are the people who will stand together in a community and see me shift the land? Because when two or more come together, God's promise is that he will move. God's promise is that he will command a blessing when people come together in the beauty that is oneness of community. We praise God for that. You know, I want to talk about how Esther needed a Mordecai. Esther needed a Mordecai in her life. Mordecai was her cousin. I'm highlighting this today because some of us who are watching this, they're begging God, please use me. Some of you've got people in your life who you continue to ignore because they're family and you've become familiar. You see, Mordecai was instrumental in Esther's calling and purpose to shake a nation. If not for Mordecai, I do not believe that there would have been the breakthrough that she would have seen over the land. Without a Mordecai, I do not believe that there would have been the impact and even the daring capacity for her to stand before the king. Without a Mordecai, I do not believe that she would have even been able to decide that she would go into fasting and call the nation to pray and intercede into the nation. But he pushed her and he told her to be wise. He told her to go and do what she needed to do. And some of you need those people in your life. I know I have people in my life who keep me accountable. 
when the Lord first called me and he said, I want to use you on YouTube. I want to use you for the nations. I want to use you in these places. God sent people by my side to encourage me. I'm telling you today, my friends, if it, not, if it had not been for community, if it had not been for those ones whose faces you may never see. You're looking at me right now. You're looking and hearing my story right now. You're looking in my eyes right now. But my friends, you have not seen the many people behind me who have pushed me and they've said, Nia Cerise, keep going. Nia Cerise, you have to keep running. Nia Cerise, you must not give up on the calling. And this leads me to one of my last points. This leads me to Moses, Aaron, and her, many of you already know this story. You know, you know it, Exodus 17, there's a war breaking out and Joshua's fighting on the land. Every time Moses lifts up his hands, they win. Every time Moses keeps his hands up, they continue to advance. But when Moses puts his hands down, my friends, they lose the battle. There was somebody who was standing in the gap. Moses was there. And as he got tired, Aaron and Hur came to his side. Aaron and Hur began to lift up his hands and they held on to him. You know, many people speak about this scripture. They speak about Exodus 17 and they talk about it in a way where it's like, oh, yes, they were just holding up, you know, Moses' hands to support him, I suppose. They were holding up his hands, you know, and I'm sure he, he was being supported. But no, the Bible clearly explained to us in verse 12 that Moses' arms grew tired. Moses' arms were so exhausted. Moses' arms were ready to just give up and throw in the towel. But the Bible says that they held him steady until the sun went down. Why am I speaking about this right now? I'm speaking about this right now because these men held him steady. And you need people like that. People who will hold you steady and they won't just be your supporters who clap and lift you up, but they'll say, listen, I'm not allowing you to quit. I'm not allowing you to get tired. I'm not allowing you to put your hands down. I'm not allowing you to give up and turn back and run back to the old ways and the old life and the old things. I'm keeping you steady. I'm not giving up on your calling because I can see what's ahead of you. I can see what's on your life. I can see what God's called you to do. And you, even though you feel tired, you feel vulnerable, and you feel ready to completely give up on the call. I'm holding your hand. I'm really happy that I can speak to you about this today because my friends, this calling that God's placed on you is powerful. This calling that God's placed upon your life is not individual. This calling that Jesus has released to you was meant to be carried out, not for a one man show, because all of this is about Jesus and all of what he's going to use you for is for his glory. But Jesus is calling me to speak to you today and tell you, my friend, that he wants you to have a community. I have intercessors who are constantly praying for me and I'm sure they're even praying for me now as I preach to you all. If not for them, I'm not sure where I would be. And right now, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray that God, if you feel like you don't even have a community, you don't even have, you don't even have anyone, I'm going to pray for God to lead those people into your life. I'm going to pray over you. If you've left church and you're feeling like, man, what she's saying is really resonating with me because I've got no one. And I've been doing this by myself because I've got unforgiveness, hardness of heart, and I just haven't want to hit, I just... I just feel like I haven't want to hear what people really, you know, want to pour into me or say to me because I don't trust anyone in the church anymore. Maybe you're listening to this right now and you're thinking to yourself, wow, I had family members who had a calling of God on their life, but instead of actually embracing them and going to them, I was jealous of them. I began to rival them. I began to hate them. This is where the devil wants you to remain, my friend, in jealousy, in fear and in comparison. And that's what isolation does. Because maybe, just maybe, God has actually put these people in your life directly. Mentors on social media right there in front of you, walking in what you want to walk in. Because he wants to call you up higher. And he's saying, I love you so much. I've placed a mentor in your bloodline. 
and I've, met, I've actually placed an individual who can call out destiny from you on social media. So let me pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every listener who's listened under the sound of my voice. And I thank you, God, for teaching us secrets of the inner circle, secrets of having people who are truly behind us and with us and holding us through, Lord. Will you strengthen every person listening to this right now with community. Every person who feels as though isolation has been their comfort for a season, God, I pray that you would push them back into community. I pray that every unforgiveness in your heart would completely melt under the sound of my voice right now and you would reach out and you would repent and you would say sorry to that individual you've been comparing yourself to. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would rise up to this calling that God's placed on your life in Jesus' name and realize that it was never meant to be walked alone. Bring them, Lord. Bring them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We call them forth right now. Bring a Shadrach. Bring a Meshach. Bring an Abednego, Jesus. Bring them. Bring a support system for these individuals in Jesus' name. Your calling will not fall flat on the ground. You're rising higher in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you so much for tuning in today to TBM Presents God Use Me series. We're just getting started. God bless you and goodbye.